Hey, good morning, guys. How's it going? Um, I'm going to take a, a day kind of to go over uh, a specific question that I had. Um, it came from Silva, and I'm assuming that Silva had this question that there was a bunch of other people in this class who had the question that just didn't ask it. Um, and it revolves around going to slope intercept form. So, um, slope intercept form, you guys should know by now because we've been using it, I don't know, ad nauseum for, I don't know, like three months. Um, and that, that slope intercept form is that good old fashioned y equals mx plus b. Now, we know this is good for graphing, right? Because, you know, we have the slope and we have the y intercept, right? But also, if you wanted to, you could make a table of values. So if we said something like y is equal to 2x plus 5, well, we know. That means we're starting at 5, right? And we're going up to over 1. And then up to and over 1, right? And we could just kind of keep going with that pattern, right? Again, 2 is a fraction, it's 2 over 1. That's my slope, so it's up to over 1 and 5 is my y-intercept. Um, it's also useful if we were making, say, like a table of values, right, where if we said okay, if x equals this, then y equals this. So we can have y is equal to 2x plus 5, right, and we can, we can just pick out a few numbers. So we'll pick out these same three numbers. If I plug in 0, y is equal to 2 times 0 plus 5. Well, 2 times 0 is 0, and 0 plus 5 is 5. If I plug in 1, y is equal to 2 times 1 plus 5. Well, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 5 makes 7. And 2, y is equal to 2 times 2, plus 5. And 2 times 2 is 4, plus 5 is 9. And again, we see our slope here. What's our x changing by? Changing by 1. What's my y changing by 2? So again, my y's are going up by 2. My x's are going up by 1. Okay. So long story short, again, I don't want to get too caught up in this because we should know how to do this by now, um, is that slope intercept form is a better way to grip, whether you're using a table of values or whether you're using just kind of, I'm starting from here and my slope is going up and over this many. Um, so let's talk about other forms. So there's also AX plus BY is equal to C. Now we call this standard form, which I, I take exception to. And you'll understand why when we start talking about our next set of functions. Um, and that's what these over here are in. And um, in your guys' work that you should be doing, um, no, not that one, this one. Uh, a bunch of these are in standard form. Now, you can graph in standard form. You absolutely can. Um, it's just a little more complicated. Um, but generally speaking, uh, it's definitely still possible. Um, we do the intercepts. That's a thing for another day. Uh, but essentially, what we want to do is we want to isolate y. We want to put this in y equals mx plus b form. right? We want to get the y by itself and then move the x and the 5 over to the other side. Um, so I'm going to go over something that's not quite the same thing, but it should give you a general idea of what we're trying to do. Now, if I said, for most of you guys, um, I don't know, 5x plus 3 is equal to, I don't know, let's keep it nice and easy, 23. And I said, hey, solve this. Most of you guys would know, hey, let me, uh, let me subtract 3 from both sides, right? I'll get 5x equals uh, 20, and I'll go ahead and I'll divide by 5, and I'll find out that, what, x is equal to 4, right? No big deal, right? And what do we do? We isolated our variable, and we solve for x, okay? Um, now, what if that variable were y? No big deal, right? We would have kind of just a, a y instead of an x, right? So the, the letter itself doesn't matter. Okay. Um, 
what we're going to be doing is essentially that same thing, using those inverse operations, the addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, to isolate a variable y. So I'm going to go through a few of these examples, and hopefully that'll kind of clarify things. So again, I have x plus 5y is equal to 5. And when all my steps are done, I want y is equal to, right? I want y is equal to something times x plus or minus something, okay? So the first thing you want to do to get y by itself is to move anything you can add or subtract. Now, we're going to look at some of these examples, like where you may think about dividing first, right? Like there I see, all right, I'm going to have to divide by negative 2 and have all even numbers. That might not be a bad idea. But for the most part, we want to do any addition, subtraction we have first. Now, x is just a number. x is just a number. We don't know it. So we can just go ahead and subtract that whole x. Okay. So what are we going to do? Subtract x from both sides. So we have 5y is equal to negative x plus 5. Can you write 5 minus x? Yes, absolutely you can. But remember, our slope-intercept form is mx plus b. So we really want to have our x's first and our constant second. So can you write it like this? Yes, and maybe I'll do an example like that so you guys see what it looks like. Um, there's no harm in doing that. You just have to know when all is said and done what slope is about and what other things about. So again, what do I have here? Negative x plus 5. Okay? And my next step is we're going to have to go ahead and divide both sides by 5, right? Now, again, this means this 5 has to get distributed. It has to go here and it has to go here. Okay? So uh, 5 divided by 5, that's just going to be y, right? So that's kind of what we wanted, right? Now we have negative x over 5 plus 5 over 5, right? Because this 5, this 5 has to get distributed to both. And again, eventually you're going to go from here straight down to your last step. Well, let's not forget that this is really a negative 1x, okay? So again, what's my slope going to be? Negative 1 -fifth x and what's 5 divided by 5 that's going to be 1. If you're not sure about this part, remember this this really means what? It means negative 1 times x divided by 5, right? It, well, again, just think about your basic operations that, again, I'm dividing both of these things. It doesn't really matter which order you do them in because we're moving left to right. So negative 1 times x becomes negative x divided by 5 is going to be 5. So the big thing to remember is that dividing by 5 and multiplying by 1 fifth are the same thing. All you really have to look out there for is the negative. So just, just to kind of show that to you because this is something I, I think gets overlooked a lot. 1 fourth times 20 or 20 over 4. Well, 1 times 20 is 20, and 20 divided by 4 is 5. 20 divided by 4 is 5. Again, 1 times 20, right? Think about this. 1 times 20 becomes 20. 4 times 1 becomes 4. And it, again, you get the same answer. So you really just have to remember that there's a 1 there, and this will become 1 fifth. It's actually less clear in this example because it's one. It, it'll be a little more clear in some of the other examples, even though they're actually harder problems. Um, but bar none, this is your now and slope intercept form, which again would be a little bit easier to grab than this one. Okay, so again, what were you trying to do? Move the x first, then divide by the coefficient. So we moved over the x, we divided by the coefficient five, um, and then again, we got our new slope-intercept form equation. All right, I'm going to go through. I'm not going to go through all these, um, but I'll pick a few that I think are, you know, a little more important. So let's take a look at a really straightforward example, and that's going to be this third one here. Okay. So we have two x plus y is equal to four. Very straightforward. I'm subtracting two x from both sides. So what am I going to get? y is equal to negative 2x plus 4. 
Um, again, just as a side note, if you had said y is equal to 4 minus 2x, that's fine. You just got to remember you're now on y is equal to b plus mx4, right? W which is okay. You just got to remember that your slope is not the thing that comes first. It's the thing that's multiplied. And your y-intercept is not the thing that comes second. It's the, it's the, the number that's by itself. I really would get into the fact of calling uh, this right here your answer. Um, again, it doesn't really matter, but you, you're going to have to remember an extra nugget of information with this one. Right. Um, how are we doing on time here? All right, we're at the 10 minute mark. Okay. So let's take a look at just we'll go straight down to a few, a few more of these and we'll take the next. Uh, we've got um, 4x minus 2y is equal to 6. Again, what are we going to do? Subtract the x first. Put the negative 4x. Make sure you keep that negative sign and the 6 is positive. Again, now what are we going to do? Divide by negative 2. Okay. Uh, negative 2 divided by negative 2 is just to be 1y. Now remember, this negative 2 has to go to both of these. It has to get distributed, right? Um, so negative 4 divided by negative 2 is going to be positive 2x. And 6 divided by negative 2 is going to be negative 3. Okay. Um, here, if you thought about dividing first, it, it wouldn't, have, wouldn't have been the worst idea in the world. Um, just to show you guys, if you had thought about dividing first, again, if you guys kind of understand this concept, you guys want to move forward a little bit. I mean, we know we have to distribute this negative 2, right? That's going to be our last step because we have to get y by itself. That's what we're going to be dividing by. Well, this is divisible by negative 2, this is divisible by negative 2, and this is divisible by negative 2. Um, they tend to, your, your guys love to set a lot of the problems up this way. Um, so again, what would you do? You divide everything by negative 2. So again, if you felt so inclined, this would be negative 4x plus y is equal to negative 3. And then when you added the 4x to both sides, you'd again, I'm sorry, negative 2, negative 2. Sorry about that. Um, you go ahead and you get that same answer. So again, pick your poison. I, I, if you're not too, if you're not too sure about things, stick to the adding or subtracting, the multiplying or dividing uh, method. Um, so let's do maybe two more of these. I hope you guys can hear my wife yelling at the cats downstairs. All right, um, let's pick uh, this guy right here. Three x plus 4y is equal to 4. Again, let's move the x's. 4y is equal to negative 3x plus 4. Let's divide by 4. What do we get? y is equal to negative 3 over 4x plus 1. Again, remember, this should be for us. Um, pick more. Oops. Pick one of these guys from down on the bottom, and then I will go over a couple things that are on your sheet. Okay, so let's do this, this one right here. So we've got uh, 3x plus 5y is equal to negative 25. Again, what do we do? Subtract 3x. Negative 25. Uh, so again, it's 5. Negative 3 divided by 5 is negative 3 over 5. Negative 25 divided by 5 is going to be negative 5. Okay, um, so let's take a look at a couple of these and how they pertain to um, what we've been talking about this. Um, it's my email. No, that's not us. That's us. So if we're taking a look at a couple of these problems on your work, let's take a look at example number 3. Uh, which equation do you want to rewrite? Well, you obviously want to rewrite. Oh, I forgot. I, can't, I don't know why this won't work. Um, 
you want to rewrite this one. Um, and I guess six y minus three x to the six. Six y minus three x is equal to six. I don't know why it won't let me write on this one. I have the screen open. Six uh, y minus three x to the six. So again, how could you rewrite this? Okay, again, what are we gonna do? Here they put the y first. No big deal. Let's add the x to both sides. Sorry. Let's add the three x to both sides. Again, what do we have? We have 6y is equal to 3x plus 6. Let's divide by 6. Again, y is equal to, just this gets distributed. Um, you could write 3, 6x, but you guys should know how to reduce fractions at this point. So again, if you had wrote 3, 6 and you had done 3, 6 in there, please, bye. Uh, my wife's going to work. Um, if you had done it this way and left it as, you know, three over six x plus one. That, again, that's, that's not wrong. And in fact, if you went up three and over six, that's the same as going up one over two, up one over two, up one over two, just three times. Um, so it wouldn't be wrong, but again, let's let's, let's keep it like class eighth graders and let's go ahead and let's uh, do those fractions, okay? Um, so again, what could you do from there? You can go ahead and you can grab these points. Um, again, your first few examples on the bottom are in this form. Um, well, let's take a look at number three, six X minus two Y is equal to negative four. Six X minus two Y is equal to negative four. Again, what are we doing first? Let's subtract, subtract the six X from both sides. So negative 2y is equal to negative 6x minus 4. And again, let's divide by negative 2. So just equation solving. So y is equal to well, negative 6 divided by negative 2 is going to be 3. Negative 4 divided by negative 2 is going to be positive 2. Okay, so then you can go ahead and you can graph those um, as you guys uh, deem appropriate. Again, I, gotta, I still am trying to figure out a couple things with screen recording. Uh, when I use the uh it won't let me when i use the smart screen record i i can't it won't let me draw it'll just let me make dots in um any pdf so i will uh, i'll try and figure that out um and we'll take it from there uh you know what i could do let's try and do this let's do english i'll pick out a different example i will do well, i'll do one example we'll do number we'll do number four well, shift. Let's copy this thing and let's paste it in here. So, um, again, which one? This one's fine. We can do that kind of as it is. This is the one that we need to uh, change. So, we have 2x minus 3y is equal to 9. So, what are we going to do? Let's subtract two x from both sides. Again, trying to isolate y. We have negative three y is equal to negative two x um, plus nine. Again, we're divided by negative three. Just watch your signs. Um, a negative divided by a negative is equal to a positive. So these kind of cancel out. So we have two thirds x. Nine divided by negative three is going to be negative three. Okay, so I'm gonna do, I'll do these in two different colors. I'll do this one in in uh, in blue. Okay, the one we just changed. So where are we starting from? Starting from negative one, negative two, negative three, and we're going up to over three. It's my slope up to over three. Again, we can actually go down two and back three down two and back three. And the reason we're allowed to do that is because negative, negative, and negative, negative. Okay. Uh, and then you can go ahead, you can connect the dots. Do that in blue. And then we'll connect the dots. Okay. 
Uh, and let's do the other one in a different color. We'll do the other one in red. I guess we'll do this one in red. So where am I starting from? I'm starting from negative five. Negative one, two, three, four, five. And my slope is four thirds, so I'm going up four and over three. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three is our answer. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. Okay. And we can connect the dots there. Okay. So again, What's our solution going to be? Our solution will be for the intersect, which is right here, which is three, negative one. So please, three, negative one. Again, usually a good idea to go ahead and label the graphs four thirds, x minus five. Okay, and over here, this one will be, by the way, you can use either one. So just to show you, I'll label it as the original. You can label it using either your original equation or the one you created, okay? Um, so I will do one more, uh, and then I'll kind of leave you guys to it. Uh, so I guess I'm going to use a sniffing tool every time I want to do this, which is super annoying. Uh, so number five, uh, sniffing tool. Let's uh, copy this one, close these up. Uh, okay, so the, here we have to change both of them. So we have negative 2x plus 4y is equal to 12. So what we have to do, let's add 2x to both sides. And we'll say 4y is equal to 2x plus 12, we'll divide by 4, we'll have y is equal to, well, 2 over 4 is 1 half, and 12 over 4 is going to be 3. Okay, so again, where are we starting from? We're starting from 3, and we're going up 1 over 2. So we're starting from 3 and going up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. Okay, again, if you guys want to follow the pattern, go ahead and do that. Uh, we are going to connect the dots. All right. Oh, did I mess up? I did. I did, just watch yourself, guys. I make mistakes too, yeah. Um, I make mistakes too. I'll draw the line. I'll draw the line. The dot. Okay. Sorry about that. Line. Go there. I love you, smart board, even though I'm not there. You're still messing with me. I have to do this every time. I don't know. Okay, so there you go. There's our first line. Okay, and this is going to be, again, why I have to change this every time? I don't know. Let's do this in blue. We'll do this other one in blue. So we have x, why I have to do this every time? I don't know. X minus 2y is equal to 6. Subtract the x from both sides. So negative 2y is equal to negative x plus 6. And again, let's divide by negative 2. We'll distribute that to both and we'll get, well, negative 1, we'll get negative 1. Divided by negative 2 will be positive 1 half. And negative 6 divided by negative 2 is going to be positive 3. Uh, this is not a coincidence, okay? They are actually the same line, okay? Uh, and you wouldn't know that from looking at them, right? So until we put them both in the same form, you don't realize that these are both the same line. Um, so here's the thing. How many solutions are there? Um, everything. 
everything makes both of these true. Okay, so we write our solution is all real numbers. Okay, so again, what doesn't what isn't totally apparent here, um, it, it is kind of totally apparent here, right? That um, did I have a did I mess this up? I think I did. Yes, because this is negative three. Okay, so now so look, scratch that, scratch that, scratch that. Careful, careful now. Uh, this is positive six. I drew that old, my own bad handwriting got me in trouble there, um, but I, I caught it. Okay, um, careful. This is negative three, which means these are not the same line. This starts at negative three and goes up one half. Okay, so watch yourself. Sorry, writing on this pad thing is not uh, real easy to do. Okay. So again, when we connect the dots, we're going to find that these two, these two lines are parallel. Okay. Um, so then, quite to the contrary of my first mistake where I said that everything's going to be an answer. In fact, when we do it this way, uh, nothing is the answer. So let's label these. Y is equal to one half X plus three. And this is Y is equal to one half X minus three. Uh, they don't intersect. There are no solutions. And so there's no solutions, okay? Um, but bottom line, like I said, guys, it, it's gonna be pretty much the same format for all of them. You're gonna subtract an X from both sides and you're gonna divide by the coefficient for Y. Okay, so uh, I hope you watched this long. If you did, good for you. Um, go ahead and uh, take a look at some of these questions you guys have on the PDF. Um, let me know if there's any further questions because I'd like to move on to our next topic tomorrow. So like I said, if you have any questions, please ask them. Um, but if not, we'll, we'll, start, we'll start reviewing a little bit of the elimination method tomorrow, okay? Uh, thank you very much. Hope you guys are all safe. I'll talk to you later. later.